This question is essentially asking us to determine the displacement of this golf ball. And whenever you're calculating a displacement, what you're really trying to figure out is the length and direction of a vector from the starting point, which was right here, to the ending point, which is right up there. So our goal becomes to find the length of this red vector right here, as well as the direction. And in order to do that, we're gonna to have to add the individual vectors. You'll notice in the question there are three vectors. There's the one going north, the one that's sort of going in the northeast, and then there's a third vector right there that's kind of going in a southwest direction. The best way to add vectors is to organize the information into a table. So let's come down here and take a look at this type of table. We have our three vectors, which again we've called A, B, and C, and then our job is to find the resultant. And what we're going to do is break the vectors a, b, and c into their x and y components. So we'll start with vector a. We can look at the picture and we can see that vector a is pointing straight upward. And the fact that it's pointing straight upward along the y-axis would indicate that its x component is actually 0 meters. The y component is the 4 meters given in the question. Notice it's positive 4 meters because that vector is pointing straight upward. We can move on to vector B. Now vector B is a little bit trickier because it's pointing in a northeast sort of direction. So we're gonna to have to break that up into its X and Y components. And we can do that by perhaps re-graphing that vector just to get a better look at it. So we'll make a little Y and X axis down here. And then we will re-sketch vector B, which again is going in a northeast direction. Now, the magnitude of that vector is 2 meters, so we can label this vector 2 meters. And because it's going in a northeast direction, we automatically know that this angle right here is 45 degrees. And it is our goal to first find the x component of that vector. So perhaps we can call the x component, which projects to the right, bx, and then the y component, which projects straight upward, by. Let's try to find bx first. You'll notice that bx is adjacent to the 45 degree angle, and that the two meters is the hypotenuse. And think about what trig function involves the adjacent and the hypotenuse, and you will soon realize that it is the cosine function. So we can say that the cosine of that angle, 45 degrees, is equal to the adjacent side, which is bx, over the hypotenuse, which is two meters. We'll multiply both sides of this equation by two, so that the twos cancel out on the right-hand side, and then you'll pick up your calculators and you'll do 2 times the cosine of 45, which will give you 1.41 approximately. So that's in meters, and that is the x component of vector b. We can actually go back up to the table and fill that in. Positive 1.41 meters for the x component. Now let's consider the y component. You'll notice that the y component is opposite to the 45 degree angle. And then again, we have the hypotenuse of 2 meters. So opposite and hypotenuse would be the sine function. So we'll come down and show that the sine of that 45 degree angle is equal to the opposite side of by over the hypotenuse, which is two meters. Again, multiply both sides by two, so the twos cancel out on the right-hand side. And on your calculators, you can type in two sine of 45, and you will find that you get the same answer. You get a positive 1.41 meters for the y component of vector b. So far, so good. We have to figure out the components for vector c, and it's probably a good idea, again, to redraw the vector so we can get a better look at it. Vector c is pointing in this sort of southwest direction, as noted earlier. It has a magnitude of one meter, and then they give us this angle right in here of 30 degrees. We can draw in the y and the x components. Notice here that the y component would be projecting downward, so we're going to call that cy, and then the x component would be pointing to the left, so we'll call that cx. Let's find the x component here. Now be careful, the x component is opposite of the 30 degree angle, and then we have the hypotenuse of this right triangle of one meter, so the opposite and hypotenuse is once again the sine function, this time for the x component. So we could say that the sine of the 30 degree angle is equal to the opposite, which is cx, over the hypotenuse of one meter. We can multiply both sides of the equation by one, cancel it out on the right-hand side, 
And then on our calculators, the sine of 30 is 0.5. But be careful here. Look at the picture and you'll realize that the x component is projecting to the left in our diagram. Now, when a vector projects to the left, we must make sure we assign a negative sign to it. So don't forget that negative sign, again, because that x component projects to the left. So there's the x component. Let's take a look at the y component. We see that the y component is adjacent to the angle. And then again, we can use the hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse is the cosine function. So the cosine of the 30 degree angle is equal to the adjacent, which is cy, over the hypotenuse of 1. Multiply both sides by 1 and cancel. And then the cosine of 30 degrees is about 0.866. That's in meters, that's the y component. Look back at the picture and ask yourself if that should be positive or negative, and you'll notice that the y component is projecting downward, so indeed it should be negative as well. So we must make sure that both the x and the y components of vector c are negative. So let's go back in and fill those into our table. So the x component was the negative 0.5 meters, and the y component was the negative 0.866 meters. We've got all the x and y components for our three vectors, and now to get the result in, what we do is add the x components together, and then add the y components together as well. So you're sort of adding vertically downward in your table. And for the x component, when you add things together, you're going to end up with positive 0.91 meters. For the y component, if you add things together vertically, you will end up with approximately 4.54 meters. Okay, so far so good, but now we have to take these resultant components. We have the resultant x and the resultant y, and the last thing we have to do is to draw a new right triangle. So let's come down here. Let's recall that the resultant x component was positive 0.91 meters, so you'll project a vector to the right along the x-axis. That's your x component of the resultant, and then the resultant y was about 4.54. That's positive, so you have to project it straight up along the y-axis and label that 4.54 meters. Now the overall resultant that we really seek in this question, which represents the displacement of the golf ball, is of course this vector right here. So we're just going to call this the r to represent the overall resultant, and we can see from the Pythagorean theorem that that resultant squared is equal to the 0.91 meters squared plus the 4.54 meters squared. So pick up your calculators and evaluate the right hand side and you should get about 21.5 roughly. And that's equal to your resultant squared. So of course to get the resultant you're going to want to take the square root on both sides. And when you do that you obtain a resultant magnitude of about 4.63 meters. So that would be the magnitude, but as stated earlier, we also need the direction. So let's not forget that. We come up here, we see there is an angle right there. And from our trigonometry knowledge, we can see that the tangent of that angle is equal to the opposite side, which is the 4.54 meters, divided by the adjacent side, which is the 0.91 meters. So pick up your calculator and divide 4.54 by 0.91 and you'll get about 4.99 but that's not yet the angle to get the angle you actually need to take the inverse tangent on both sides you can write that as tangent raised to the negative one that actually cancels out the tangent on the left hand side and then on your calculator you'll have to enter in the inverse tangent of the 4.99 and you're going to get about 79 degrees approximately And since that 79 degrees is facing in a sort of northeast direction, you could say 79 degrees north of east. So we have the direction of 79 degrees north of east, and we also have the magnitude of the displacement, which is 4.63 meters. And these represent the answers to the question.